Welcome back. The Infrastructure Engineering Research Project is about doing more things than just completing a project. It's about learning how to do research and it's also about developing yourself to put you in a better position to get a job. And so in this clip we're going to think about how you can increase the value of the time you spend doing the project in order to uh, develop and articulate those competencies that employers are looking for in your job interview. So the focus today is transforming yourself from a student to a professional engineer. I like to think of engineers a bit like this Swiss Army knife. They might be one person but they have many different functions and many different capabilities and competencies that need to come together in order to produce a well-rounded professional that is attractive to employers. Engineers Australia has classified the competencies that are expected of graduates. So the graduate attributes have been divided into three areas the knowledge base, professional attributes and engineering ability. The knowledge base is influenced by your discipline. So are you a civil engineer, environmental engineer, electrical engineer? And it's really about what do you know? The second aspect is influenced by industry. And they are interested in your engineering ability or precisely what can you do? The third aspect, professional attributes, is influenced by society and is very much about what do you value. So thinking about your research project and how you can develop these competencies and articulate them, communicate them within a job interview is one of the things that we'd like you to work on. So just let's think about the knowledge base. There are a number of aspects of the knowledge base. Things like the knowledge of science and engineering fundamentals, you know, your engineering materials, your chemistry, physics, mathematics and so forth. Uh, and for a particular discipline, an in-depth competence in at least one of these engineering disciplines. So, for example, a civil engineer might know about fluid mechanics, whereas an electrical engineer might have in-depth te technical competence in circuit theory. The third aspect of knowledge are the techniques and resources that you would have available to you to solve problems. Knowledge about the context and scope of the discipline and projects that you work on. And an appreciation of the future directions of your particular discipline. The second area, engineering ability, is about application of engineering methods to help solve complex problems. So the fluent application of engineering techniques, given that you've learnt some uh, engineering numeric, uh, mathematical equations or mathematical models of particular engineering situations, are you able to apply those in practical, in practical areas? Ap application of, of systematic synthesis and design processes. Having a problem and a client how will you bring together these techniques in order to create something new that will solve a problem? And finally, the ability, manage, the, the ability to manage engineering projects is vital for you to work as a professional engineer. And finally, the professional and personal attributes are things like being able to conduct yourself ethically and have professional accountability being able to communicate your ideas to the profession and to lay audiences. Issues about creativity and innovation and being open to new ideas and new views of the world. Being able to professionally manage information, being able to manage yourself and being able to work as a member of a team and or a leader of a team. So in your research project, you can see that all of these things 
are open for practice in your research project. It's not as though that you can't already do some of these over your university education and perhaps prior work experience. To some extent you developed all of these and the research project as a capstone subject will allow you to practice those ones where you need to improve or to refine those ones where you think you've already got high levels of uh, ability in those competencies. Available on the Infrastructure Engineering Research Project website are detailed descriptions of each of these uh, aspects of the engineering competencies. I'm not going to go into these but be aware that if you want to dig deeper and see exactly what these various things mean then there is additional material to describe them and to test yourself or evaluate yourself against with regard to each competency. So to this end I've created a matrix which is also available as a checklist to see where you're up to. And so I've listed each of the uh, elements of competency uh, as uh, headings in one column and then um, an area where you can record your progress. I've just set it here from the first to the fifth year of your engineering education but uh, you can change that time scale to whatever is uh, suited to you and then at various times an evaluation of your ability in a particular competency. So are you a novice? Do you have some basic knowledge? Do you have a moderate level of knowledge? Are you proficient or maybe you're expert? Now I would encourage you to spend some time reflecting on your current level of ability and filling out this matrix at the beginning of the uh, each semester of your project in order to identify those areas that you might specifically concentrate on to improve and therefore imp uh, be in a position, better position to perform well in a job interview. So if we think about the professional development cycle the review, plan, implement and check cycle is uh, common in many areas of uh, engineering and uh, systems management. So the review, do a self-assessment against the EA competencies using that checklist. Plan, make a plan of how you to are to improve one or more competencies. Implement, put that plan into action and then check to see if the plan is working or needs adjusting. Having implemented the plan, you can then go back to the review cycle. So I would very much encourage you to implement this idea of review, plan, implement and check and to make a record of this in your professional development record within the subject. And in your plan especially, do some reading, do some personal research on particular aspects of how you might improve a competency. So for example if you identify that you would like to improve leadership skills, jump onto Google, go and find some, uh, some things that have been written by people about leadership. There will be some ideas that you could try and pick an idea that you think might suit your particular style and try it out and see if it works, uh, implement the plan and then evaluate yourself against the goals that you have set yourself.